commence this evening proceedings, we will begin with screening of FTCCI film. I would now like to request our senior vice president, Shri Suresh Kumar Singhal ji, vice president Ravi Kumar ji, chair healthcare committee, Shri Shekhar Agarwal ji, and Dr. T.S. Prasad onto the stage. And also, uh, sorry, Lakshmi Nivas sir, Madhaj. Now, I would like to request our immediate past president, Anil Agarwalji, to give away token of appreciation to Dr. T.S. Prasadji. Let's invite our senior vice president, Shri Suresh Singhalji, to give welcome address for this gathering. Thank you. Good evening to all. Dear esteemed guests, colleagues, and fellow healthcare professionals, 
it is with great pleasure i welcome you all to our ayurveda seminar an ancient legacy and wisdom for your health firstly i would like to thank our esteemed doctors dr k srinivas rao ji dr b uh, ramdas ji and our speaker for today dr t s prashad ji i would like i would also like to thank our partners prompt packaging chain founder foundation and icici bank for supporting this event at ftcci we recognize that economic prosperity is linked to the health of our workforce a healthy and vibrant community is the foundation of economic growth and development with the understanding we have taken this initiative ayurveda the science of life i think uh, i think goes for beyond a collection of remedies and treatments it is an ancient system teaches way of living aligning our mind to body with the natural world today's seeming is a testament to our commitment to promoting holistic wellness within our community we are honored to have assembled such esteemed experts from this field who will guide us through this ancient practice let us embrace the wisdom that has been passed down through generations Em embracing a lifestyle that fosters balances vitality and overall well-being thank you for joining us on this journey may the knowledge and insights that will be shared today inspire you to adopt a healthy healthier and more balanced approach to life together let us harness the power of ayurveda to cultivate a healthy healthier community thank you all for participating today's program this program will be i think uh, in ancient days there were no um uh, uh, our uh, the today's uh, medicines and all but uh, you know there were vedas ancient uh, yogas in yog in ayurveda they were vedas doctors they were called vedas and they were also treating they were operating also in those days that system was different but nowadays our uh, system is has become very costly also ayurveda medicines are uh, little bit uh, cheaper than what we are getting the new medicines nowadays medicines so better practice ayurveda i request all in their lifetime thank you very much i would now request our chair and convener health care committee shri sekar agarwal ji to set the tone of the event with his team address welcome sir Uh, few people are outside can we call them inside uh, dr prasad sir our senior vice president uh, suresh singhal ji vice president ravi ji past president shri lakshmi nivas ji sharma our uh, past presidents managing committee members health committee members friends and media a very good evening to all of you friends ayurveda is an ancient wisdom which has Uh, treated cured a numerous people since last several century in time immemorial friends i would like to congratulate you for your decision to join today's sem seminar it shows your commitment to improve your health my special congratulations to all ladies here your presence shows your commitment not only for your health but for the health of your entire family can we give a big round of applause to you and all the ladies who are present here
Thank you. And on behalf of the Federation, I would like to express my thanks and gratitude to the Director Ayush, Madam Hari Chandna, IS, Dr. Prashant, Department of Ayush, Government of Telangana, for their wholehearted support for today's program. I am thankful to our past president, Sri Lakshmi Nivaji Sharma, uh, to accept our invitation to share his personal experience on Ayurveda. Tomorrow, early morning, he's got flight to Kerala, but on our requ request for his love and affection, is here. A big round of applause again for Lakshmi Nivaji Sharma for making it. And <clears throat> we are very lucky to have a very eminent doctor like Dr. Prasad, who is an authority on Ayurveda. And he is attached to NIMS Hospital. Dr. Prasad would tell us about Ayurveda, its relevance in today's time, its success stories. Our kitchen is the biggest pharmacy. Here, I'd like to take a minute of yours. In another forum, we conducted a program. Uh, the subject was Live 100 Years and Beyond. There was a speaker who was 100 years plus and who was having a very good knowledge on naturopathy, Ayurveda, and homeopathy. And he was asked what to eat. And he said, whatever is cooked in your kitchen, you must eat, because your kitchen is the biggest pharmacy. Now, friends, our grandmothers and great-grandmothers, they had very good knowledge on the spices, what we use in our kitchen. But down the line, we lost it. So here, through Dr. Prasad, again, we'll be regaining. So it will be benefiting our generation and generations to come. Now, the kitchen is the biggest pharmacy, then common challenges and solutions. Then women's common health challenges and solutions. Longevity, everyone likes to live for a very long life. And uh, Dr. Prasad will give you good recipe and formula for it. And everyone is, again, nowadays concerned for skin and beauty, because that is one industry is still thriving more. More beauty parlors are coming. And here, maybe, as our president was telling, at much lesser cost or no cost, you can have uh, 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 your beautiful skin. And I'm sure that all of us would take the best benefits of doctors, uh, Dr. Prasad's presence here. I wish all of you and your family good health, longevity, a lot of happiness. Good luck and goodbye. Thank you very much. Now, I would like to invite Sri Lakshmi Niva Sharmaji, our esteemed past president, to share his personal experience, providing an insightful first-hand perspective on the transformative power of Ayurveda in his life. Welcome, sir. Chief guest of this evening, Dr. Prasad, the senior vice president of the chamber, Singhal Ji, Vice President Sri Ravi Kumar Ji, Chairman of the Committee Shekhar Agarwal Ji, Distinguished Past Presidents, Managing Committee Members, Invitees, Ladies and Gentlemen. As you know, I was on a very tight schedule and I wanted to have an excuse for coming here because Tomorrow early morning, I am leaving for Kerala and I will be away for two weeks. If I go for a day or two, probably may not matter, but I have to see that all my arrangement and whatever I need in the hospital are with me. But however, Shekhar asked me to be here before you and he wanted me to share some of my practical experience. Uh, before I take you to my own personal feeling of effect which has happened on me, 2011, I had a very severe problem on my neck. I consulted 28 doctors throughout the country. Among that, about six people, those who were surgeons, they advised that it is a must that I should have a surgery on my neck. All other physicians and other doctors said 
don't commit this mistake if you go for that anything happen to your neck you will have a paralytic attack on the table itself because the, all the veins will be passing through that i was really in dilemma in fact one of my very family doctor he was insisting that yes there is no other alternative other than going for a operation my operation was fixed i my pre operation all tests are over incidentally i told that without going to tirupati and coming back i will not go for operation the doctors told in apollo i am giving the name of the hospital also apollo mr sharma you cannot travel if you travel if the plane lands at the jerk of that you get a paralytic attack and they made such a situation that i was to cancel my travel by flight and then said when they found that i was very adamant they asked me to go by train i went by train and came back by train and train were more risky than flight <laughs> because the train when it was because my situation was that when the even the train when it was Stopping. moving moving like this in the speed or something i was feeling much more because mm, rather mentally i prepared that one came anything can happen after the situation uh, rather it's a god's grace that after having a tirupati darshan downside there is a ayurvedic hospital run by the ttd devasthanam and i used to know one of the doctor who was even advising me for my heart because i had all the ailments so heart was also one that so whenever i used to go i used to consult him straight away when i narrated all the story he told mr sharma come with me he took me to inside the ward and introduced me to two patient to whom he was treating who had got the operation and had the paralytic attack one was suffering for 9 months another was suffering for 6 months they said these are the patients i am showing you and i don't advise you to go for operation believe me i asked him because earlier i was not having that confidence on this particular disease because he was looking for my heart how he can do this one that was a question mark then i thought if he is treating some people for this one after this why not i take the advice from him he did prescribe the medicine i said i don't know whether this ayurvedic medicine will be available with this brand or not or something is problem is there take the money ask some of your person to get the medicine here itself i have taken the medicine from there he he said take the medicine for 3 months and after 3 months i'll see you at least he was assuring that 3 months i'll survive <laughs> i brought the medicine after coming to hyderabad one of my very close friend he told somebody has come he will do the acupressure i said okay there is no problem i told my doctor ke i'm not going for operation my operation was fixed i cancelled my operation my senior doctor who was my consultant he was very annoyed in fact he told i'll take you to london or america but i'll get because this is a must that you have to have a operation i decided not to go for that in the meanwhile one of the another very close family friend he advised me that i'll refer your matter to kerala whether they will accept it or not this was the talk which i am telling about february he referred from there i got the message that they can do the treatment that is ayurvedic hospital but waiting period was one year and with the certain influence ke bhai any cancellation kindly accommodate me i got the admission in september 
from February up to September. September I went. Believe me, it was a basically a oil massage therapy, and they have medicines also. And it so happened that I got almost 65 to 70 percent relief. I, 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 I myself can't believe that such, such thing can happen. It has happened. There, the thing which I can just explain, though I am not advertising for that hospital or something, but they had a huge hospital, about 200 beds. And in that, if the waiting period goes up to one year, you can understand. Because all bookings are done in advance. Three things which I have seen there that I wanted to share. One of the doctor, an allopathic doctor, Indian, settled in America for almost 28 years. He came to India along with his wife. In Bombay, it seems he was delivering a talk. And at that time, all of a sudden, as he stated to me, and he still comes the last, I think, several years, his wife, the spine was co totally collapsed. The doctor said that. He is a medical doctor, he said that. He rushed to many of the places in Bombay, Delhi, all other places. Everybody said, very difficult case. Somebody advised to go to the Kotakal, Kerala. The lady was brought in the stretcher and she went by walk. And from that date onward, I think almost, because I, my, I have completed in 12 years now, every year I go there, and the doctor must have completed 18 years. And he still comes. Doctor is hale and healthy. He comes along with his wife, and he performs in the garden, because the hospital has got a garden, in the morning, that is the time pass for them. He teaches all the patients, other people, the yoga. The doctor himself teaches the yoga, and he says, okay, this is the treatment which has been done for my wife. Secondly, my case, I told you that I got 65% relief. After that, almost regularly I am going. They have, they have about three factories where they manufacture their own medicines. They have about half a dozen farms where they grow the herbal. And they, they run a research center. They run the medical Ayurvedic Medical College. So what I'm telling you, and the chief of that one was awarded the first as a Padma Shri, subsequently given the title of Padma Bhushan. After completing his age of 100 years, after he completed 100 years, after 20 days after completion of 100 years, he could have died. And that man, when he was of 96 year age, he used to come to the fourth floor, fifth floor to see me also by staircase. And the doctor used to run behind him and I'm sharing that this is a situation which I found wonder. Then I asked what he eats. Half-ripe papita. When I went to some shop from where to purchase, many of the fresh papitas which are coming, they say, Saab has taken away. And he says, even to advise to me, if you don't have <clears throat> because all diseases come from your stomach. You have to see that uh, whatever you are putting inside, avoid that. Last, before year, another example I am giving you. My second son, who is also a chartered accountant, uh, about eight years back, he developed a leg ment tear. Leg ment tear or something they call leg some problem has happened and because the young boy 
doesn't believe in the Ayurvedic. He went to Sun Hospital, Dr. Guru Varedi, and got his leg operated. Again, three years before, he was having the similar problem in the other leg. I forced him, why, though you don't believe, but why not you go there? He was not finding time because of his busy schedule. Somehow I forced him. Believe it, after he has gone, fourth day he telephoned. His treatment was booked for 14 days. And fourth day he tele telephones to me from there, Papa, I'm 60% okay. And of course, he didn't complete his course completely at the 10th day because he was to go for some assignment for the institute, he has left. Earlier, he went alone with his wife. Last year, after death of my wife, he accompanied me. Again, his busy schedule was the same. He was there for 10 days, though he was booked for 14 days. After 10 days, he left. My another son came and joined me. And uh, again, some improvement was there. Again, tomorrow morning, he is accompanying me because he is now fully satisfied that this particular treatment is only the thing instead of depending on allopathy. I don't say allopathy is totally bad, but one thing is when you want to have certain emergency, because every person wants that I should be, my headache should go away in 15 minutes, then whatever medicine you take in allopathy, they have side effects also. Ayurvedic treatment doesn't have any side effect. So, though it may take little more time, no doubt, I, I totally endorse that it takes its own time. But if you follow the restrictions or any such thing which has been given to you and take the correct Ayurvedic medicine, I can tell you, you will be cured for any complicated disease also. Rather, my father was never used to have any allopathic medicine. Once it so happened that he went to a doctor, he was having some giddiness and other thing. Doctor saw that his BP and told that you have a BP. And father replied to him, your instrument is wrong. I cannot have a BP. And he very categorically told, before his death, he has given me a letter also, whatever happen, I don't want to die in the hospital. And don't do any type of thing. He was hale and healthy all up to 1978 years age. And only 15 days before, he went to the bathroom, he could not get up. He didn't fell down. He could not get up. And immediately he told my wife, because I was in Chennai, he told my wife, don't panic. And if Lakshmi Nivas comes, tell him not to travel for next 15 days. My journey has started. And he was on the bed. He was deteriorating that one. When we took him at the advice of doctor to Apollo, because they said, give the glucose. So for giving the glucose, we have taken. And he told, I warned you that I don't want to die in the hospital. Why you have brought me here? First, we went for the, some MRI. Then doctor said, okay, he's not taking anything and not, why not? So he was very much annoyed. Finally, we were to shift him to home. And of course, his age was over. But he survived without any medicines. What I'm telling you, my personal experience is, even when I'm speaking to you, there are few medicines which still I take. Reason is, as I told you, I'm standing before you, all type of ailment I have in my body. I had first angioblast, I had second angioblast, I had bypass. And this neck problem was 
देयर वन एंड हाफ ईयर बिफोर आई फेल डाउन अगेन आई वॉज इन द हॉस्पिटल एंड ए रॉड वॉज पुट दैट्स वाई वॉकिंग इज अ डिफिकल्टी बट स्टिल विथ माई डिटर्मिनेशन विदाउट स्टिक आई एम वॉकिंग राधर आई गेव आई आई गेव अप द स्टिक लास्ट ईयर फर्स्ट नवंबर नॉट ओनली इन हैदराबाद आई ट्रैवल आउट साइड ऑल्सो विदाउट स्टिक एंड आई एम मैनेजिंग इट इज वन डिटर्मिनेशन इज रिक्वायर्ड एंड इफ यू हैव अ प्रॉपर आयुर्वेदिक मेडिसिन आई कैन टेल यू देर इज अ नो सब्सिट्यूट फॉर दैट आफ्टर द आयुर्वेदिक मेडिसिन राधर आई कैन से देर आर सर्टन यूनानी मेडिसिन देर आर सर्टन अदर मेडिसिन अल्टरनेटिव मेडिसिन वॉट दे से दे आर मच बेटर and if we go for that one uh, rather one thing is which we are we are unable to control is on our tongue <laughs> and mouth whatever thing is there we eat and i i told that i spoiled my whole health particularly by going to the institute of chartered accountant of india body and contesting the election i used to go to the for one person for vote he he has given me tea second man gave the coffee third said okay you have taken you take majiga the so fourth man said you take coconut water then somebody said i am preparing something more coca cola so ultimately we spoiled our system because we we were to oblige because i have to get the vote and <laughs> i i cannot say that i will not take and i cannot annoy him so to please that particular person we spoil our thing another thing which i can tell you how i spoiled my health overeating and why the overeating because i have taken it oath type of thing that i'll not leave anything which is going to be waste in my plate and somebody like mr raju comes and take no you take this sweet or you take this bhaji ultimately he has put in the plate and i can't live in the plate and ultimately i have to take and i, I ultimately spoil that one though i have learned but still i am maintaining that i don't leave it i rather folded hand tell the people that don't put me on the pressure so these all things are there if you do and follow the ayurvedic medicine and have, have no proper yoga and other thing i think there is better rather today also i get up at 5:30 5:30 to 8 o'clock is my time i do all exercises for my leg also i do my yoga also and i walk almost up to 5000 steps per day with this particular ailment also so what what i am telling you have a determination think that everything will be all right don't be panicky with that one and if you go with ayurvedic medicine definitely you will be you yourself will be realizing it is difficult when you start let us start after some time you yourself feel that this is the best one i don't want to say anything more thank you very much what i have given thank you thank you so much sir for such an enlightening speech uh, before moving forward we would like to acknowledge and express our gratitude to those who have made this camp a success i would now like to invite shiv rungta ji and harish chandra prasad ji onto the stage to present our token of appreciation to dr k shrinivas rao and dr b ramdas for their dedicated services today in the camp so please
Now, to dig deeper into the heart of our seminar, we have our distinguished speaker for today, Dr. T. S. Prasad Ji with us, who will enlighten us with his presentation on Ayurveda. Uh, all the dignitaries on the dais and off the dais. <coughs> I thank all the organizers for giving me this opportunity to present my talk in front of you. My name is Dr. T. Srinivas Prasad. I am a graduate in Ayurveda from Hyderabad. <coughs> now I am working for NIMS Wellness Centre. So today we will know a lot about the Ayurveda, how exactly it has come into our life. Uh, Lakshmi Vasarma sir has really boosted up a lot. So today we will look at it. So we will talk much about you know basics of Ayurveda and Ayurvedic for everyone. Ayurveda and its relevance in today's mo uh, modern science uh, and then success stories, some of the success stories which I have treated at my clinic in my dispensary and common health challenges and their remedies which we regularly witness in a day to day life and some of the longevity tips and women's health and the beauty care which is also a very important thing. As we all know, the Ayurveda belongs to very ancient days, that is some thousands of years back, 5000 years maybe. Can you imagine what kind of medical facilities used to have in those days? How exactly they were treated for their diseases and all. They were, most of the diseases which, which we are witnessing these today, these days now, were not in existence in those days. But still the system has uh, developed a lot of treatment protocols for most of the diseases which are existing now. Cancers were never seen in those days. Even we, we also, whenever we talk to our grandfathers and grandmothers, uh, they never told us, you know, uh, how cancer used to be. Some rare conditions they used to have, you know, cancers and all. Nowadays, cancer has become a very common phenomena among most of the people. That could be because of our lifestyles. Maybe your uh, uh, daily routine practices and all. What are the causes? There could be many uh, different things which we'll definitely look in this particular program. See, look at this. This is a very important uh, kind of slide. I just wanted to all you to look at it. The present scenario, when you look at it, very few amount of people, uh, those who are propagated with uh, public health practices or healthy practices or preventive health practices. Then most of the people are so they are because of uh, lack of practices, public health practices or maybe preventive practices, people are going to primary health care or maybe to the secondary health care, a larger number in tertiary health care. If we can propagate line larger number, maybe preventive health care propagation, automatically number of people attending the primary health care is reduced, attending the secondary care is much reduced and tertiary care even further reduced. So which we have to look at that particular area as you know, Shekhar sir was telling me our vision 2030 or so. This should be the practice which we need to adopt. Come on. Uh, these are the few things, you know, which I wanted to show you. So that was an university where uh, medical practices, medical colleges were run. And that was, you know, the situation where a teacher used to sit and most of the disciples were taught with the medicines and some practicals were conducted among the dead bodies to know the anatomy or you know, most of the scientific things. Next slide, please. This was some of the cultures, how exactly those medical practices, uh, this was depicting the delivery. It was cultured almost, you know, some thousands of years back, this particular sculpture seen in the Southern India temple. That was the most relevant style of getting delivered that is squatting system. Nowadays, people are looking uh, to have a practice of this kind of delivery instead of doing in a position. 
nowadays practices are like you know a lady a pregnant lady is uh, made to lie, lie down in a lethotomy position and then the delivery is being made in this particular one this that particular pregnant lady is made to squat and then the delivery is made because of the gravitational force prof maybe the delivery was very easier there was no injury to the baby next please see most of the people doesn't know that ayurveda had surgery or surgical practices you can see the surgical instruments which were used in the those ancient days and that was how the surgery was performed upon a patient people had uh, rhinoplasty first plastic surgery practices were there sushruta the father of surgery was considered to be the first surgeon who existed in the world and they are all the instruments even for uh, today also we use the same kind of surgical instruments next please you can see the cap uh, the doctor is performing cataract upon a particular patient the uppermost the left one is rhinoplasty next please so basically when you go to get into the uh, principles of ayurveda ayurveda believes that a person who has to be healthy should have a healthy doshas doshas means a governing things in a body that is vata pitta and kapha these are the three humors which governs our health as long as they are in equilibrium probably everybody is healthy that is what we say who is healthy sama dosha that means all the doshas in samavastha samagnischa that means is agni basically digestive power is normal samadosha samadhatu samagnischa samamalakriya see all excretory organs excretory things which need to be excreted are to be normal and all the dhatus that is you know the healthy, healthy tissues which make our body are to be normal then only we call it as healthy health that also includes spiritual and mental health the same as the who also gives us next please so these are the doshas next we go a little faster and these are the dhatus dhatus means you know automatically rasa rakta mamsa medo asti majja shukram rasa means the the basic part of the first dhatu which you know is developed into raktam and then into rasa rakta dhat mamsa masti asti majja shukram and medas medas shukram okay these are the seven dhatus which makes our body next please the prakriti depending on the you know the all these dhatus we when we are look at it everybody has got their own unique pra- constitution that is prakriti according to their prakriti they are advice are you know they have to incorporate the dietary things in their diet so according to the situation seasonal things seasonal changes they have to make some differences according to their own prakriti and agni is most important thing you know which is very much required whenever you eat something you know that has to be metabolized <coughs> this is not the basic metabolic uh, thing which which uh, you know like you know digestive power jathar agni what we call every meal which we eat it has to be get, it has to get digested and it has to be converted into the energy and rest of the kitta bhagam that is you know excreta which has to be excreted in a very proper way then definitely the health restored <coughs> otherwise there will be a disease ayurveda basically what it does says is as long as you are healthy it has to be sustained whenever there is a disease ayurveda tells to you the cure not the management but cure most of the diseases can be cured when it is not cannot be cured then we have to manage it if not so then definitely we call it as asadhyam that is the prognostic values when we grade it in such a way sadhyam krichra sadhyam yapyam and asadhyam okay next please next please so to maintain all our healthy life healthy uh, things we need to follow the dinacharya dinacharya means daily routine when exactly we have to get up when do we aunt, uh, have to get up so usually our ancestors says our elders says 
you need to get up at 4.30. That is Brahmi Murta, which is one hour, one hour, 30 minutes, one and a half hour before sunrise. Why exactly that? If no one really gets up in the morning, because of their maybe lifestyle, maybe job, somebody goes to bed maybe in the you know, mid of the night, early morning of the night because of their day shifts. <coughs> Basically what really happens is at 4.30 when somebody gets up, that particular time, our basic uh, metabolic hormones like thyroxine and all of the catecholamines that is adrenal are very low. So automatically your metabolic rate is completely zero, normal. Then if you get up, your excitement, your anger, everything is normal. So then, then if you start your day, that will become very easy for you to maintain the all the day. It becomes completely at uh, peak by 9 o'clock in the morning. So if you get up in the 4.30 in the evening morning, then automatically your day starts with a very healthy note. So these are the routine things in which we need to do. First getting up in the early in the morning and then doing all your uh, natural calls, attending natural calls. Your oral care is very important, including strap in the tongue and all. And then doing, you know, some abhyangam onto your body, doing some exercise. See, abhyangam nowadays every no one is doing. Have you noticed all these days, whenever we go for a blood checkup, we'll see our vitamin D is very low. Am I right or not? Because most of the times we sit under a roof, this particular roof. No uh, ventilation, only air condition. We never get exposed to any sunlight. So automatically all our uh, vitamin D is very low. Basically vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin. So our ancestors used to do a lot of abhyangam onto their body, anointing some oil onto their body and sitting under the sun, exposing to the sun. So basically sun is the best source for vitamin D, where your uh, uh, skin is you know metabolized, uh, that deep vitamin D is metabolized in the skin and then that is supplied. Now automatically even when your vitamin D is very low, if you start anointing some oil onto your body and sit in the sun, probably within 15, min 15 days your D vitamin D comes to normal. So such a wonderful thing. So those practices are gone now. <coughs> Sorry. See, it has to be. See, sunlight is more healthier when it is orange in color. As it goes a little brighter, it becomes a kind of a burning. You might burn your skin. So oral care. These days, the doctors are saying uh, more, more exposure to sunlight can cause skin cancer. That's true, sir. See, I'll tell you, sunlight when it is after uh, uh, maybe 7, 7.30, it becomes more brighter. When it is, you know, a little orange in color, the frequency is very less. Ultraviolet frequency is also less. So automatically, you will get more the vitamin D during that particular period. If the brightness goes up, automatically your sun star skin also starts burning. Have you seen people, those who are polar areas, living in the polar areas, they go for sun bath only because to get the sunlight or vitamin D. Those people because they are not getting exposed to the sunlight, they are getting skin cancers. My question was what time to what time in the morning is good? That is what sir. I am very specifically saying orange color sun. Arunima. Arunima is there. Can you imagine Arunima? The red color which you know comes out before the sunrise and uh, the same in the sunset also. That should be the ideal light. Even for uh, those newborn babies, those who become a little uh, jaundice type of things, you know, they are advised to expose to the sunlight. Uh, friend, I understand that all of us will be having a lot of questions. So my only suggestion request, let us reserve our questions. Uh, that would be time, fine, actually. Uh, yeah. The time uh, doctor completes, uh, then we'll have enough time with him. Thank you. Soil massage, doing some yoga, 
after doing the yoga you, you need to have a bath every day after that you know according to your own uh, uh, practices that is meditation and all according to your own practices you can do perform that next please ayurveda always advises to have two meal one in the morning and one in the evening <laughs> yeah yeah so that could be may maybe you know nowadays we are having a breakfast lunch and dinner hmm that's that's true. according to ayurveda what really happens is when you have a full meal that is in the morning you can have you know full meal according to the season as per your constitution of the body so you can incorporate things into your diet you can have it then you can go to your work and do everything come back home and you have to finish your dinner before sunrise sunset after your dinner is finished you have to go to bed and aim for at least 7 to 8 hours sleep the moment you know the it reaches your bed uh, bed by the time you have a sleep you would the dinner must have already digested that would be the healthy practice but it doesn't happen all the time so everybody should you know exercise these kind of practices then automatically the longevity definitely is always with you then coming to rutucharya as we have seen you know dinacharya that is a daily routine which has to be practiced every day and rutucharya you know it, it all depends upon the season see all the uh, six seasons we have right everybody aware nine six seasons so, yeah yeah that particular book we have made it you know this uh, that one you can go through that hmm yes yes everybody got this so in this seasonals according to the season you have to practice your diet in a particular season very hot things are required to be you know incorporated into diet sometimes spicy matter is you know not recommended in those days so according to them you can really have them next please next please though we suggest you know rutucharya dinacharya and everything but you can adopt according to your own dosha your constitution by consulting a good ayurvedic doctor who can tell you your constitution and according to that you can practice your diet individual customized diet ayurveda always tells us you know it it uh, looks at a person as a whole and like any other uh, you know system of medicines we always look as a whole mind body and spirit so we treat accordingly whenever whenever we are trying to treat uh, the body we also consider the mind we also consider the spirit we also take you know c- consideration of the season of that particular time and then we start giving a personalized prescription next please next please so this is an ayurveda ancient uh, you know system of medicine for the modern times next please when covid has inducted into our lives it has left you know lot of experiences actually we lost or for- forgot you know all the practices those used to be have uh, in the, those old days in old days everybody used to be you know called as an orthodox but nowadays those practices are the modern practices so ayurveda it tells you no preventive care basically it tells us the preventive care ayurveda is the only system which talks about the prevention next please there are many slides but you know we'll go very practically probably that might bore you the basic three you know the pillars of the life or health is aharam nidra and brahmacharyam 
your food has to be very healthy it has to be you know very uh, healthy energetic and you know life saving so we were talking about according to the season you need to have a good prescription or good amount of ingredients in your life uh, the diet according to your condition your doshas according to your season so you have to adopt your diet then nidra is you know complete healthy sleep sleep is not the one which has to happen in the day it has to happen in the during the night now it is what exactly the people think is see throughout the night i am working so i have to substantiate sleeping in the day but that always brings some disease to you because i'll tell you during the night what really happens is metabolic rate is very low in the body metabolic rate is very low when we sleep our cortical activity is also becomes very low so that will match automatically metabolic activities are very low that will definitely nothing to harm but when you sleep during the day the day is very active your cortical activity is completely low automatically there will be a problem that fellow definitely get into vata disorder that is some some of them neurological disorders maybe metabolic disorders all the time only grishma rutu is you know allowed to have diva swapnam that is sleep in the day that is during the summer but not in winter not in the rainy season next please so brahmacharya means procreative activities these procreative activities are also be in normal sense sir what happens is afternoon time everyone sleeps i will come up sir please you know i'm sorry otherwise you know it starts deviating see reserve all your doubts whatever you know will definitely have you know maybe i'll stay up to whatever the time you want but bring out all your doubts so this is the uh, holistic approach whole body wellness we look at everything in the body when we are treating a particular condition in a particular area we also look at in you know, other areas in the body so we'll start treating the whole body then everything comes into normal next please next 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 so this particular thing is very much required now we are we uh, as you know uh, most of the people were talking about you know allopathic system and ayurveda there is always need of integration every immediate situation acute conditions they require allopathic uh, treatment modalities when it comes to a chronic kind of condition automatically ayurveda can definitely heal the situation for example a status asthmaticus that is you know the bronchial asthma when it comes in a very acute state he requires some oxygen or some steroid supply steroid uh, uh, support some oxygen support some other antihistamine support which can be adopted from the modern medicine after that whatever the situational changes are you know systematic changes which are required to be adopted into the body can be managed with ayurveda so finally if ayurveda and allopathy can be incorporated or you know integrated in that particular particular patient automatically everything can be managed we can really help the patient and ayurveda and naturopathy of course they are both both they go together next please and we'll be definitely discussing about ayurvedic accessible remedies simple solutions for daily life and uh, these are two success stories this first thing our past in this past i have to tell you something like this get back there is pass pass button it's a video pointer wahan pe leke jao ha wahan pe hai na
this particular girl who had a birth injury during the delivery she had some problem it was an assisted labor so she had a problem and she had you know anesthesia in this particular area this particular left hand she had it was completely uh, anesthetized there was no sensation in this so at the age of 3 months she lost her mother then she started you know thumb sucking uh, in the beginning you know it was almost all normal when she started teething up she started biting it because there was no pain she continuously you know biting so that happened almost at the age of you know at the birth age i saw that patient the patient came to me at the age of 8 years so all these years that was like that that was the situation switch on <laughs> so it got treated in uh, almost uh, one and a half year uh, one and a half month sorry it was completely normal and the best thing was she gained her uh, sensation also it all because of the vidya karma which i did and she is the girl and i'm really sorry that particular video was lost okay not a problem so there are many things you know which can really treat with uh, these particular things ayurveda it was auto amputation madam auto amputation she started biting it since you know there was no pain and there was you know something she could enjoy because she lost her mother she had the feeding everything was little love from outside only outsourcing completely so somehow she was managed by her uh, paternal grandmother so she brought to me and uh, irony was she was about to be amp- amputated up to this particular day. we could stop it now the girl is with the same thing <laughs> if you want to see uh, i can show you in the my, my mobile did it did it grow back no no sir can you see this yes yeah this was the first one it was in 12th jan 2021 okay it was after 7 days this particular picture can you see this it was it it was up to 20 days no and that's a something something different ma'am I'll, i'll definitely i'll i'll, I'll definitely answer it I'll definitely and this is up to 20 days this was one month fit 10 days it's so maybe one week and this was the girl can you see this this was the girl it all happened you know in the 2021 so we could at least treat her there were many cases which you know i only had you know few amount of pictures of which i could you know exhibit in front of you next please now we'll come to the kitchen what really need to have in a kitchen where you can at least you know treat some of the may, may minor elements and most of the times we are not uh, i'm really against to tell you all the remedies because most we will start doing the remedy at home and leading it to some serious conditions my sincere advice is not to do that whenever you have any simple minor element try to do this if not so see the doctor okay i will definitely give you some of the main uh, uh, things which i can really advise you this is the basic thing which you can have up from among the spices you can have turmeric cumin seeds coriander fennel i'll tell you turmeric is a very essential thing but everybody has to ensure 
it is very organic nowadays people are buying it from outside where uh, it, it is you know adulterated uh, lead oxide is the most very uh, prominent condition where you know prominent uh, thing substance which can be adulterated with that because that also looks almost like haldi and this particular haldi can be directly applied onto the face most of the our females our mothers or sisters at home they apply it onto their feet during some ceremonies right sometimes it is also allergic to some females so whenever you try to do it upon your face try trying upon your you know body try to do a patch test then try to apply it but ensure it it should be organic it should be you know uh, powdered by your own things like okay then this particular uh, haldi can be had every day in the morning and evening in a cup of milk so you can stay away from your allergies stay away from your coughs regular coughs or seasonal changes or seasonal upper respiratory tract infections or so cumin seeds jeera cumin seeds or jeera which is which are also very important in our diet but it has to be always used after roasting jeera is considered to be a poison if it is not roasted and used so it has to be roasted and then used everybody they uh, put in a saute and then they use it right so automatically it is purified fennel seeds also same jeera is used in most of the urinary tract infections along with coriander you can use it the jeera if it is taken with jaggery the puran puran gud puran gud bolte hai na old jaggery which is you know more than 6 months old which contains lot of uh, iron other trace elements black color one black one brown brown it could be anything sir i'll tell like could be sir i don't exactly know that because you know guda guda is you know our term which we use it most of them we advise but you know we don't buy it and give it good <laughs> yeah good good is good actually <laughs> so if it is made to a paste jeera jeera ka gudam that is sanskrit you know classical medicine jeera ka gudam which has to be made you know repeatedly which has to be you know uh, done in the motor continuously for uh, maybe some 100 times or 1000 times it can be taken regularly which is an anti helminthic that means it uh, combats the intestinal worms it is good as an uh, carminative very good in carminative if you have any bloating condition like continuously bloating if you can take jeeraka gudam that is wonderful madam take uh, jeera which is roasted which is roasted and then put it in a kalvam that is in a mortar then take a pestle take the je- uh, gudam which is you know more than 6 months old continuously you rub it make a paste of it uh, when it gets equated con- continuously it may made a way, very good paste and then make you know a, t- a tablet of almost uh, regupandu that this much this much then you can have it continuously see madam jira we, we are from since birth you know we are still using it then what is wrong taking it continuously see when it comes to the medicine we always talk about you know the duration according to the ayurveda most of your foods are medicine only food since we are taking in a larger quantity we call it as food medicine we take it in a very little quantity so we call it as medicine only so automatically the same with the duration also food you can continuously take till your death <laughs> but medicine it can be anything madam i'll tell you one thing if a particular powder i'll tell you hingvastaka churnam that is there if your appetite is low your appetite is very bad then you need to put 
one spoon or maybe two spoons into the first bowl of bolus of your uh, rice and put a one spoon of ghee into it mix it and you just have it the first meal of your uh, bolus uh, first bolus of your meal right then that definitely helps your appetizer very good appetite it increases all your appetite if you take in mid of your meal it takes away all your bloating condition whenever you bloat it bloats no automatically it goes off if it is taken after the meal it takes off the diarrhea condition and takes off you know a uh, kind of you know other uh, digestive issues this is how we plan it ayurveda tells you the dosage like you know mohur mohur you can take take you know multiple doses before food middle of the meal after the meal so that's how it is divided so coming to coriander coriander is a wonderful thing even it's used as a leaves regularly in our um curries and all it is also used as a dry seeds which can be made into paste or it can maybe made into the powder and can be used if somebody has any urinary tract infection regular burning in a micturation condition if you can consider it as a minor element for a shorter period every during the night before going to bed you take a powder of uh, one spoon of pull full of powder uh, uh, this coriander seeds one glass of water you made into boil during the boiling you just put one spoon of coriander powder close it and close the stove next day morning you take an entire water that is called dhanyaka himam himam if you can practice continuously chronic urinary tract infections also goes off it's a wonderful medicine it is a pure urine alkalizer it also works in prostatic condition in most of the prostatic conditions what we see in senior males after 60 years whoever have any prostatic condition prostatic elements if there is any emergency urgency if they can practice this automatically it, it is you know subsides a little dhanya dhanyal dhanyal ya kotmir i'm talking about the seeds i'm taking a paste of you know one uh, bunch of uh, coriander leaves every day in the morning with the two uh, black pepper seeds black pepper need to be needed to be roasted ones two black pepper seeds one bunch of coriander leaf paste made into a bolus can had that will improve anemic conditions most of the anemic conditions they can really have they can really have we have observed madam we have observed in conditions after one month you know we could see almost 1.5 grams of raise in hemoglobin even with the amchur we have tried amchur what it does we will come into it amchur i don't think amchur means mango powder right mango mango powder yes. coincidentally it must have happened but you know i don't think that is purely amlatum amlatum that is i am coming to that actually moringa leaf is wonderful actually moringa leaf nowadays people are you know buying it a large this much of capsule is costing us around 7 rupees which is not even cost of almost 1 paise <laughs> sir i mean, sorry uh, my friend has been saying not to put many questions last time when i went to a shop in the us costco 100 grams of moringa leaf was sold at 10 dollars that's true sir that's what i'm saying if you can grow your uh, uh, moringa plant at your home so everything will be free for you right so coming to fennel seeds there is a practice that you know after every meal we chew fennel right somp somp 
that you know uh, helps in your bloating that helps in your digestion that helps you in your uh, cardiac issues it should be it can be roasted or it can be directly taken uh, but roasted fennel seeds taste a little better not required not required next please this is the few things you know which you can have it in your uh, uh, kitchen the first thing is tulsi of course everybody have it tulsi is a wonderful thing it's a basil holy basil in that we have many things krishna tulsi is almost 64 varieties of tulsi are available so this is lakshmi tulsi which you are seeing now krishna tulsi is a little darker uh, black kind of uh, leaf brown brown kind of thing there are many things sometimes you know where uh, tulsi uh things are you know taken from some other uh, uh species which is more concentrated they uh, they make into crystals which are used into some of the spices ramatulasi ramatulasi yeah of course you can make a little boy as little as one month can be made to it <coughs> see whenever there is any upper respiratory tract uh, infections in most of the children when we see we prescribe a medicine we ask them to take anupanam as the tulsi only tulsi rasam the you know fresh juice fresh leaf juice that can be taken two to three drops and then the medicine is put into it and then it has to be chewed and then ashwagandha which is a very adoptogenic some of the patients were asking me why ashwagandha how exactly it can be used ashwagandha is more like in its a brumanam it is vajikaranam it is more potent but it is seen uh, according to some of the researchers according to chemists it's the vidhan in vidhanyol all the ingredients which it, uh, the ashwagandha has are shown very good effect in as a anti inflammatory so it is good in the joint pains or any painful conditions inflammatory conditions it is a very good immunogog it improves immunity so it is best in most of the autoimmune disorders like rheumatism like psoriasis like uh, in any other uh, autoimmune disorders okay uh, we'll come to we'll come to that we'll come please uh, uh, pull out your question in the in maybe in the next hmm? you you reserve it for don't forget and next trifula it's a most common name you know which is known by everyone wherein these three fruits are there one is abhaya that is harita ki harada bolte hain కరకాయ తర్మనేలియా చెబుల రెండోది అభయ దట్ ఈస్ తానికాయ తర్మినేలియా బెలరికా లాటిన్ ఎం ద థర్డ్ వన్ ఈస్ ఎంబ్లికా ఎఫెషనాలిస్ దట్ ఈస్ ఆమ్లా ఉసిరికాయ కరకాయ తానికాయ అండ్ ఉసిరికాయ and that is uh, you know a terminalia bellerica that is you know three myrobalans people call it as three myrobalans they are wonderful drugs actually which is used in every disease but even ratios triple is the most common thing it also used in obesity maintaining obesity it is also used in eye disorders it is also used in anemic conditions it is also used as uh, laxative it is also used as many other conditions there are almost 108 types of combinations which can be made uh, with uh, trifula 1 is to 2 is to 3 1 is to 2 is to 4 1 is to 4 is to 8 a kind of things you know which, which can be made into this then automatically that particular medicine is prepared if it is equally equated or powder of equally you know made then that can be used as a laxative at the same time it can be used as any other conditions like obesity maintaining obesity 
but for obesity it can be 1 is to 2 is to 3 amla has to be three parts uh, balarika that is abhaya is uh, used to be has to be two parts haritak is one part ne trifala is three three fruits three phala trifala bada and amla సార్ ఐ టెల్ యూ ద ఇంపార్టెన్స్ ఆఫ్ త్రిఫలా ఈజ్ వెరీ మచ్ సార్ హే ద హరిత కీ యాజ్ అ లోన్ కెన్ బి యూజ్డ్ యాజ్ లాగ్జెటివ్ బికాస్ ఇట్ హ్యాస్ గాట్ ల్యాట్ ఆఫ్ ట్యాన్ ఇన్స్ ఇన్ ఇట్ ఇట్ కెన్ బి యూజ్డ్ యాజ్ లాగ్జెటివ్ ఇఫ్ యూ కన్స్యూమ్ వన్ స్పూన్ ఫుల్ ఆఫ్ హర్డా ఇన్ ద నైట్ ఇన్ ఏ ల్యూకోమ్ వాటర్ వన్ గ్లాస్ ఫుల్ ఆఫ్ ల్యూకోమ్ వాటర్ next day the motion will be you know the bowels can be very free all the three f- fruits which we are discussing now has three as uh, five rasas panch rasatmaka alte hain usko except lavana rasam they are they do not have a salty taste but rest of all the things you know katu uh, madura amla కటు తిక్త అండ్ కషాయం ఆల్ దిస్ ఫైవ్ టేస్ ఆర్ అవైలబుల్ ఇన్ దిస్ ఆల్ ద త్రీ ఫలాస్ ఎక్సెప్ట్ లవన రసం సో దట్ ఈస్ ఆల్సో వెరీ ఇంపార్టెంట్ థింగ్ ఇన్ దిస్ త్రిఫలా చూడం ఇఫ్ సంబడి హ్యాస్ ఎనీ సోర్ త్రోట్ త్రోట్ ఈస్ పెయినింగ్ యూ కెన్ టేక్ వన్ స్పూన్ ఫుల్ ఆఫ్ త్రిఫలా చూడం పుట్ ఇన్ టు వన్ గ్లాస్ ఆఫ్ వాటర్ start boiling it till it becomes half of it and then take it off when it is lukewarm you gar start gargling it you do it every second hour i think in the within two or three episodes your sore throat gets completely normal your throat pain also goes normal in chronic wound situations whenever there is any diabetic foods or any other foods before you know we are doing some bandage and dressing also instead of saline or betadine if you can what uh, make a kashayam out of trifla churnam if you can wash it with that trifla churnam that even works more better than betadine so one more thing you know which you need to have at your uh, compulsorily in your kitchen is ghee always you know according to ayurveda whenever we say ghee it has to be cow ghee not the buffalo ghee so ghee here how exactly we make ghee there are two ways making in ghee one is you know taking cream out of uh, pasteurized milk a second thing is every day we take up uh, that particular cream out of that particular milk and then store it for a few days and then churn it make a butter out of it and then boil it to have a ghee right the second one is more preferable than the first one more polyunsaturated oils whatever you require in the cow ghee that is there cow ghee also has vitamin d because vitamin d d e k a d e k are fat soluble vitamins all these fat soluble vitamins are available in cow ghee which are very much essential for a daily routine <coughs> when you have ghee you will also get vitamin a d e and k It's very wonderful if you continuously feed your baby your new ones to till you know their adult become adult if you can feed them with ghee they have very good intellect because every brain requires you know some amount of lipids so it's a madhya rasayanam madhya means intellect rasayanam means improving becoming very healthy 
whatever the substance which makes your my mental ability is more powerful that is called medhyam here it is medhya rasayanam there are plenty of medhya rasayanas like you know as we have seen st madhu so ghee is also medhya rasayanam everybody can have ghee regularly that will improve your intellect So I I'll just come to it, sir. Please remind me once it comes. Simply because you know, madam, I'll tell you in a very scientific way how exactly it has to be taken and how what would be the situations, what would be the sequelae after taking the ghee, right? Does it not increase cholesterol? We'll definitely come to it, sir. See, as personal, uh, Anna, because you know, both of you are asking it. I uh, just let me complete clarify it here only. One of my two patients, you know, one is uh, has come with uh, triglycerides of almost 456, which ne- which has to be only 150 below 150. The other person has come with 260 or 270 somewhere. So I asked them to use Google Dikta Agritam, which is a Uh, you know, particular samskarita gritam, which is a medicated ghee. Within one and a half month, you know, they have come into almost normal. It could have been raised had it been like you know, if it increases cholesterol or triglycerides. No, it didn't happen. Really, sir, you can really try it. But it doesn't happen with the buffalo ghee. and everything and the second thing is you know i as i told you that particular cow ghee has to be made in that particular process which i told you that it has to be boiled every day and then take some cre- cream out of it and then uh, take butter out of it and then boil it then you'll get a cow cow ghee that samskarita gritam is always better which would not increase your triglycerides and nuts here almonds are very important sunflower seeds are also very important these two things will have you know uh, omega 3 fatty acids which are very important for your healthy cholesterols okay almonds are also good and we are not i am not telling you the kaju but here almonds you can include your uh, acrot walnuts that is also very important next please the of course whole grains these are all everything for uh, your kitchen next please legumes of course you should have next the healthy oil is sesame oil and then coconut oil now every day is everybody now nowadays t- uh, talking about you know olive keto oil. keto olive oil. i olive oil i don't suggest you know th- that is uh, very suitable for indians because ayurveda always says about samsthanikam because whatever is available around you which can be grown around you which can be available around you which can be produced around you has to be taken because you'll only be staple to that particular season or to that particular da- uh, in a product then only you can have since we are in southern india we are not adapted to uh, what is that uh, rai katel sarson katel right here yeah, this particular climatic and uh, north india they are susceptible for it they use even in um, uh, curries and all that's it right sir i might tell you see see uh, whenever i mustard sarsonga tel mustard see what people say is sarsonga tel bahut garmi hota hai garam hota hai ha Hmm. it's hot they say it's, it's, it's hot only because sarshapa we call sarshapa is you know that particular rai sarshapa we call it as rai in sanskrit we call it as sarshapa sarshapa is tikshnam katurasam and ushnaviryam it is good hotness in it 
सो दैट इज वॉट सी गेहूं का था कहाँ पे यूज होता है ज्यादा यहाँ पे राइस होता है सो द स्टेबल फूड इज वेर यू कैन ग्रो लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स विच आर अवेलेबल इयर दैट इज बिकम स्टेबल ऑलिव ऑयल गोज मोस्टली इन बोलीविया यूरोप दूस कंट्रीज दैट इज मोर एडोप्टेबल टू दोज पीपल बट नॉट हियर नव इट इज पीपल यू नो स्टार्ट इट टेकिंग इट बट आई डोंट सी एनी वेरी एडवांटेज आउट ऑफ इट and this particular please go back sesame oil i you know that is uh, sarshun ka tel sorry uh, tilka tel ginger oil which is very useful all our uh, oils you know medicated oils which we make in ayurveda are made out of tilka tel tailam comes from til taila means oil means tilka tel you know how exactly it can be used in what kind of conditions it can be used pardon me masala chili is a masala we make with biryani hmm that also we can use sesame oil nee sesame oil as an edible oil you can use it anywhere i am talking about the medicinal value of til til ka til ha <laughs> wherever uh, you want uh, you see the dryness in the body you can apply the sesame oil if it is dry is ginger oil ginger oil sesame oil nuvala none tilka tel everything is same sir the only difference is, is some of the til tel is made out of white uh, sesame black sesame black sesame is more uh, good and thailam is completely against vatam whenever you feel that there is a vatam vata condition some neurological condition thail is the best thing uh, to maintain your health regularly not to have your uh, um, knee joint pains at so early you start practicing til tel intake every day if you can take 10 ml of til tel regularly intake i am talking about intake then your joint pains will be postponed by maybe 10 20 years that is true What but there let me <laughs> you can think of you know prolong prolonging the life sir and he may live up to 1 or 5 years <laughs> so tilka tel yeah definitely sir every day uh, but you know you need to have an anupanam anupanam which has to be taken along with that should be mand bolte na mand chawal ka pani ne after cooking whichever you take off uh, pinch pinch uh, whatever ganji right or you know the ragi malt also you can have it it goes with the same yeah of course of course you can before the breakfast before the breakfast but once you take along with oil you know i don't think you'll have it again uh, you, you don't wish to have it in a life because ha uh, one has to adopt the taste of uh, til oil and whenever you try to use the til oil you try uh, try to you know boil it for the f- first time little boiling and then you keep it aside and then start using it uh, that would be better even for uh, medical uh, application like uh, as you want to have you know hair healthier all the days just start putting that little oil you know that particular boiled oil every day in the morning you apply into your nostrils regularly you will see that the hair becomes becoming very healthy even after just third day after third day and you will be away from having all the dust allergies sinuses sinusitis and those kind of regular you know seasonal cold and all that will be completely away yeah of course you can that is called nasyam
Pardon me? The many practices, you know, which are very practices, sometimes, you know, somebody's uh, own uh, conceptions, conceptions. Okay. Sir, can, can we have the, all the questions later on? Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> so, again, I know cow, uh, coconut oil is also very good. That is also having very good, uh, these things. Uh, they are all free of trans fats. Polyunsaturated fats are uh, very much available which are very good for your health. The next please. Uh, teas and infusions, whenever you want to have uh, some tea, you can have CCF tea, cumin seed, coriander and fennel seeds. Mix together, put some basil leaves or maybe some little ginger into it. Have some rock salt into it and then you can have it. That is a wonderful tea which you can have during your breaks. You can really relax yourself while you have it. Of course, ginger tea, of course, everybody knows it. Next, please. And this is the fresh foods, foods everybody should have at their home. Next, please. When it comes to the dairy products, all we had, you know, we discussed about ghee and other uh, these things, cow milk, butter, whatever you want to. You can. A sweetness, of course, raw honey and jaggery. Honey, if you can get, you know, the pure honey, Every day, every day, if you can apply it onto your, you know, the eye regularly as kajal, what we do. That is a wonderful chakshushyam, that is, you know, that improves your eye health. Sir? Of course. Ah, kajal. Inside the eyelid, the lower eyelid is there. This is inner canthus, this is outer canthus. Just start putting like this. Just, you know, close your eyes for at least two to three minutes and wipe it off with uh, cold water, not warm water. Eyes never be you know, applied to the warmth because it is you know, the seat of Pitta. So you should not be given hot water. That's the reason why you, know, you should not put hot water directly onto your head. When you have head bath, you are supposed to have uh, with the water, with the heat of your body temperature but not more hot. If continuously you have a head bath with your hot water, more of hot water, your rice it becomes very weak. That is true. And sweeteners, of course, jaggery. And honey is called as yoga vahi. Whenever you consume a medicine, if that particular is, my medicine is mixed with the honey, and honey takes qualities of that particular medicine and acts as a medicine itself. That's called yoga vahi. If you are uh, giving a medicine which has to alleviate vata, honey becomes anti-vata. It has to alleviate pitta, it becomes anti-pitta. If it has to alleviate kapha, then it has to, it, it will act as anti-kapha. As a loan, it is anti-kapha. When you have cough, regular expectoration, Regularly, if you have honey, if you chew honey regularly, the cough will go off. Is it okay for Sir, it's purely fructose. There is a difference between sucrose and fructose. What regularly we have uh, sugar, that is sucrose. Honey is a fructose. Fructose is little different from getting metabolized. So your glycemic index would not change, I think. But not much with this thing. That is always required. See, even when you are taking, you know, a bowl full of uh, rice, it is almost equivalent to two spoons of honey. If you can compare, you know, okay, substantially, with that, same thing, nothing will happen. If you are required to have 800 kilocalories a day, you can calculate accordingly. You can incorporate it, uh, your diet according to your, you know, regular uh, things with, with calculated amount of diet. That's a, a honey cures gangria. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, when they see, of course, honey contains a lot of uh, what you call um, pollen, which we call it as bee pollen. It's a very good uh, uh, call it what you call vrana ropakam, vrana shodakam. 
see ayurveda only has a you know a thing called vranaropanam and vranashodhanam whenever there is an a wound it needs to be uh, corrected from inside it has to be treated from inside and it sh- there should be you know uh, improvement in the callus formation then only the wound becomes normal so both these activities are there in honey so it is banana root only yes i'll tell you sir in the olden days whenever there was uh, you know lacerated wound that is a cut wound do you know how they used to stitch it suturing no no do you know ants ants big ants they used to approximate the skin they used to apply the ant ant used to bite it and then their head is cut that stays back that head stays back and they start apply applying the honey on it honey this uh, head of the ant will act as a suture since it is pure calcium it gets completely absorbed into the skin later on you know we are applying the honey onto it the tax is a healing agent poisons see ants are not poisonous it is all it will only have a particular acid called picric acid picric acid is a substance where you know that leaves are, uh, as along you know it passes through and the next ant which comes you know behind it that takes that picric acid as in a, you know the agent it follows it and that is not a poisonous one picric acid is very weak acid actually will come to it sir will come to it sir please so n- now we are talking about you know the five foods f- super foods which you should have one is first it's an amla go please amla is you know as we have already taught uh, today i'll give you uh, two three recipes amla can be made into murabba a sweet murabba which is very tasty children will love to have it every day if you can really give them you know uh, every day after their meal maybe breakfast or maybe lunch that checks all the digestive issues at the same time it amla is a rasayana which slows down the aging process your aging will be delayed by some more days some more years i can say so as i told you it is pancharasatmaka except lavana all the five rasas are there it checks out all your healthy things when you, if you take regular amla intake you will become completely healthy and as, uh, of course it is an exaggeration but our shastra says you can live up to 1000 years <laughs> that's true that's true life becomes bore eh? <laughs> <laughs> so if the particular amla this particular kartika masam we get plenty of amla fully ripe and amla you just bring them i'll i'll come coming to that you take amla buy them and then you know a cook kit for uh, you know semi cooking 80% cooked 70% maybe you take all the cloves you know that seed you can take it off put all together and then you know take uh, jeera buneva jeera powder of buneva jeera roasted uh, jeera roasted ajwain take some kala namak black salt powder everything and start mixing it and everything and try to dry it in the shadow should it dry and becomes completely dry it becomes very tasty as soon as you complete your meals at every time you can have one particular one that is sufficient vitamin c which is will be you know uh, for your entire day it gives you a very amount of good amount of vitamin c so what about the other other type of amla that's a 
దానికి ఏం మెడిసినల్ ప్రాపర్టీ దట్ ఈస్ పైత్య పైత్యజనకం పిత్తజనని టేస్టీ బట్ యూనో ఇట్ లీవ్స్ ఎసిడిటీ ఇన్ యువర్ స్టమాక్ విచ్ ఈస్ యూనో అండ్ దిస్ వన్ విచ్ ఈస్ సీన్ హియర్ దిస్ ఈజ్ వన్ ఎంబ్లికా ఎఫిసినెల్ నెక్స్ట్ ప్లీజ్ డేట్స్ దిస్ ఈస్ అన్ అదర్ వన్ ఇట్ కెన్ బి యూస్డ్ యాజ్ సబ్స్టాన్స్ ఇట్ ఫర్ సబ్స్ట్యూట్ ఫర్ యువర్ షుగర్ షుగర్స్ ఇన్ మోస్ట్ ఆఫ్ ద స్వీట్ డేట్స్ విచ్ కంటైన్స్ లోట్ ఆఫ్ కాల్షియం కాపర్ ఆల్సో ఆయన్ ఇన్ ఇట్ నో పీపుల్ ఆర్ స్టార్టెడ్ యూజింగ్ డేట్ సిరప్ ఆల్సో యా అప్ టు సమ్ ఎక్స్టెంట్ యూ కెన్ టేక్ సర్ సార్ దిస్ ఈజ్ ఆల్ యూ నో డోంట్ సే డయాబెటీస్ డయాబెటీస్ ఎవ్రీ డయాబెటిక్ విల్ హ్యావ్ యూ నో ఆ పర్టికులర్ రెగ్యులర్ కలరిక్ వాల్యూ ఇన్ యువర్ ఇన్ టేక్ ఇఫ్ యూ కెన్ ఇన్కార్పరేట్ ద డైట్స్ ఇన్ డే డేట్స్ ఇన్ టు యువర్ డైట్ యూ ensure that your total amount of diet gives you 800 kilo calories you reduce something else then ah then that's all nowadays no one is saying that you know don't stop uh, I mean, uh, stop taking fruits every day you are advised to take some of the other fruit lesser glycemic value fruits are there they can be regularly taken like uh, pap- papaya you can take but watermelon is more hypoglycemic glycemic so you are not supposed to take continuously uh, huh? hmm but you you always you know eat mindfully now these people are you know putting in a, a plate in front of them and is talking to somebody and you start taking everything your body doesn't know what you are eating so you should make your body aware what you are exactly eating so that you know the moment it reaches your gut it prepares everything a full amount of digestive juices full amount of you know other insulin and everything so that it gets easily assimilated into your body so mindful eating is more beneficial there is a study called uh, you know uh, study was on uh, colon cancers they have studied in uh, maybe you know it was sample size was somewhere about uh, 1500 people it happened in somewhere in america usa they could found out that 70% of people those who got ca- colon cancer were not mindful eaters and 67% of people were taking hot foods and somewhere about 78% or 81% people were taking uh, semi cooked so these were the areas you know where you can find uh, the colon cancer is more prominent ayurveda always says to stay healthy mindful eating the second is mitaharam mitaharam everybody says you know keep one third of your stomach empty why does it happen why should it happen because every meal whenever you eat it takes of uh, it uh, the digestive juices gets mixed into that particular one and stomach has three types of muscles in it one is the longitudinal ones one is the circular movements circular muscles and third one is oblique so one muscle moves like this the second muscle it moves like this the third one is like this so entire meal whichever you eat in once it gets, gets into the stomach it it is moved like almost as a man is you know moving everything in a bottle it's perfectly gets mixed hmm like a washing machine of you can say so that has to happen when there is some empty space if it's completely full what what would where it has to move right so mitaharam is very important the third one is you eat something whenever you are hungry otherwise if you go on eating i eat samosa now after 2 minutes i'll eat you no know, bun after 2 minutes again i'll have a you know this one that one entire day it will become municipality then <laughs> so there will no no space and no time for getting digested the other way of uh, taking a meal is to prepare yourself taking a meal second meal when your last meal got digested 
if a lot last meal is still there don't prefer going for the second meal next meal it all depends upon individual to individual that is what we talked about the agni proper agni and the indication is whenever you ta- you get a burp healthy burp not the katta wala uh, you know the acidic burp or you know some belching or so it has to be uh, normal burp no smell no burning sensation nothing comes into your mouth then it is a healthy burp then you can ensure that the proper food digestion really happen then you can go for a next meal and always prefer taking you know a sufficient amount of water during the day and there is a myth that everybody says you know you should drink a lot of water so that you know your guts and everything gets cleaned and day before yesterday you know a patient had come to me and started saying that i take a lot of water sir every day to 5 to 6 liters of water do you think it is healthy why then how much is a healthy one every day a healthy man excretes somewhere about 1.8 to 1.2.3 liters of urine and somewhere about you know you sweat a lot everybody sweats somewhere about 200 ml of 100 ml to 200 ml of sweat there is another excretion called you know some water is goes through, goes through your respiration from the nose that would be somewhere about 50 to 60 ml everything put together 2.5 liters almost plus 500 little excess to mix up all your uh, biological needs that is 3 liters if you drink more upon that every water drop has to go through the kidney kidney is the the basic thing where it gets filtered so there will be a lot of pressure on the kidney and kidney gets into stress so don't get into things of that sort and don't bother your kidneys for urine infection you say you have to take more water sir more water consumption doesn't mean that you know more amount of water of this sort if you are completely away from see nowadays the very pathetic condition among our girl children is like you know when you go outside the problem becomes very difficult for them to attend their uh, you know the washrooms difficulty to have you know washrooms or you know but they feel shy b- before between among the people be attending that particular washroom so what do they do they stop taking water automatically that ends up in some urinary tract infections please do propagate among all our girl children that you know everybody should have water in a very sufficient quantity not in excess to maintain their urinary tract health otherwise what will happen is if a girl child now becomes a chronic urinary tract infected chronic urinary tract infected it becomes very difficult to treat because the urethra in females is very small there is an every chance of entering it into the major system it becomes very systemic infection not automatically it becomes very chronic and finally t ends up in very difficult to treating conditions okay b pollen as we have already discussed this is a very most important things now if we lost those practices that you know every new born is fed with uh, g- this honey two drops of honey and they were given with honey every day regularly honey contains lot of pollen see look at the people those who are not given honey they suffer a lot with uh, allergic conditions as they grow up they become allergic to most of the pollen you can see people who are coming from abroad us as soon as they enter in india a single small uh, um, uh, what is it M- mosquito bite can pull up all the rashes on the body because they are not used to those kind of infections so clinical exposure and subclinical exposure there are two things when we we doctors you know we don't usually get 
most of the infective conditions allergic infection conditions are you know viral infection because we keep on getting patients from whom we get a lot of infections and we get immunized to that particular infection so finally we completely get immunized to those kind of areas immunity so automatically we are immunized wherein those people you know they are not immunized so if you put them on this they continuously they'll have lot of pollen in them they develop you know immunity against those pollen and whenever they get exposed to that particular pollen they don't get any allergic rashes so very healthy condition so they, they can really advise but what really happens in us and those areas because they use you know apiculture uh, honey that apiculture honey will have lot of uh, uh, adulteration with uh, botulism botulinum that causes botulinum in infection in children so that's the reason why bef- below 2 years they are not advised to have in a this one next please so ginger is the next one here the if you think of ginger there are two things one is dry ginger the other one is wet ginger these are the only two three two three slides so dry ginger and wet ginger both are originated from the same thing these are two rhizomes okay wet ginger can be used for uh, constipation ginger nahi ginger powder is something different wet ginger allam adrak bolte hai na adrak the wet one it's a rhizome you can use the juice if it is mixed with uh, jeera powder and little honey if it can be consumed in the evening next day morning she, uh, they can have a normal bowel in constipated conditions din- ginger can be used if in aruchi that is you know dyspepsia where you know you doesn't feel to have food your taste is very bad your appetite is very poor then you can take a piece of ginger burn it in a flame you just you know make a paste of it put a little pinch of uh, rock salt slightly eat it that is called lavanardrakam that is very good for appetite even a poor appetite people fellow can have you know a very good appetite within 2 3 days if the dry ginger with honey can be had along with uh, any other uh, medication that will definitely improve the potency of that particular medicine because it is a combinative honey takes up you know it's a yoga vahi so automatically the medicine uh, synergy is impressed then when when come to dry ginger all the wet ginger is made into pay, you know dried and dried ginger by putting it into um, what is called uh, lime 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 chuna chuna lime the lime is applied onto the dry uh, wet ginger and then dried up then it becomes shunti sont bolte na sont shunti that is you know a powder which is becomes a grahi that means whenever there is dry diarrhea loose motions you can have it with honey dry ginger powder the diarrhea can be reduced in other diarrhea conditions you know fenugreek seeds you know methi methi seeds that can be soaked in uh, curds and can be had that will also reduce see diarrhea is of different types one is you know ajirna that means when there is a lot of indigestion a person will have loose motions well where there is no infection at all in such conditions ajirna virashanam in that conditions if you can have you know little amounts of water cool water regularly that will improve the ajirna virashana conditions 
and this ginger can be had a dry ginger and methi and curd also can be had in that particular situation and there is another uh, remedy called dalchini cinnamon that is made into powder you just keep it in your kitchen that can be had with a little amount of water made uh, some decoction out of it 20 ml to 30 ml of decoction cinnamon decoction will help in diarrhea condition it is a very good cardio tonic which improves the cardiac health next please ghee of course what we have discussed so these are the ayurvedic foods we you have very plenty of ayurvedic foods we have okay haldi shia seeds and moringa shia seeds nowadays it has come into very famous ones nowadays people are doing it like you know micro greens they are growing into micro greens and they started using it it is got wonderful you know yeah of course the whole spice and everything you know cardamoms these are all you know has to have in go on women health work ayurveda tells you there are three things which should not be continued continuously among them first one is lavanam that is you know the salt table salt what we eat but you know since our birth we are continuously using it it should not be used more than 40 days hmm pippali lavanam and aksharam these are the three things we should not be continued continuously pippali means long pepper which should not continue more than 40 days the aksharam that is you know alkalis that should not be continued and lavanam that is table salt but here you can continuously use the salt will be the pink salt rock salt sindhava lavanam yeah yeah of course nahi it will have both both the minerals because it comes as an ore hmm not that much madam that not that much that can be used we can can use it continuously you can use it no problem yes of course uh next next please of course you should have balanced diet <coughs> next mindful eating which we have already discussed mitahar also so there should be a proper digestion for improving the digestion we have all uh, some remedies here we have discussed some jeera and having that uh, dry ginger wet ginger so one should always practice taking satvik aahara satvik aahara means which improves the sattva guna in a patient in a, in a person manas has three gunas one is sattva rajas tamas it has got two doshas that is rajas and tamas so we as long as you take sattva aahara satvik aahara your all sattva gunas will improve next please of course the detoxification is required whenever the patient uh, person becomes deceased we have herbal support to maintain our health these are the family health remedies some of the health remedies we have already discussed it's time getting time little delay it's already 7:30 go on please so for diarrhea and all kutaja is you know the prior one ah that is anti dysentric that is a drug available in kutaja that is you know for uh, diarrhea bilva is agile marmalus what we call it as bilva bilva patram people is long pepper this is all for bilva is grahi again next please 
for constipation we have haritaki alone you can have or haritaki mixed with haritaki karkay so in trifala that is one among them trifala as a whole you can use it and isab gol for uh, elderly cons people uh, those who have constipated you know three isab gol is a must What next please that's a husk of a particular seed sir isab gol for headaches we, we so uh, some of the things you know which i am talking about headaches headaches are something different uh, different headaches as we witness most of the headaches are which we encounter during you know even the evenings that could be hypoglycemic headaches simply you mix one spoonful of uh, glucose or some dextrose or maybe you know having a cup of tea with good amount of sugar or having you know some glucose biscuits or that is means substituting your body with some glucose will improve your that headache if the headache happens which starts very mid of the day, day or in the mid mid mid, mid in the night that may be a pitta ja headache if you apply cow ghee into your nose that's all within minutes you know you can relieve migraines also if you regularly apply cow ghee into your nose nostrils very if you feel that nami that moisture in your nose you know you just have to apply that uh, ghee regularly that will alleviate your uh, headaches most of the migraine headaches do you advise afternoon sleep <coughs> as it already told only grishm ritu summers insomnia insomnia is you know sleeplessness for reasons could be many thing many thing uh some of them you know happens to uh, between you know some people in with uh, suffering from diarrhea uh, sorry diabetes some people have any mental issues psychological issues then they have no sleep sometimes very many other issues the basic thing is melatonin if the melatonin hormone is depleted people will not get a proper sleep they start to they have to start using some uh sleeping agents they might induce sleep but you know that practical uh, practically speaking you know you'll not get a proper sleep next day when you wake up all the hangover will be there right melatonin sir melatonin is a hormone which is secreted by uh, you know pituitary pineal gland pineal body which requires you know a good amount of melatonin is required for your sleep proper sleep yeah that is also there proper you know this chia seeds and all these th- things will improve your melatonin yeah meditation will improve chia seeds chia seeds can improve application of oil application of sesame oil on to your scalp regularly before going to the bed will improve the sleep the second thing is warm oil which is you know little made into warm can be applied onto uh, this foot plantar area if it is massaged onto the plantar area that will improve uh, good sleep any oil sesame oil is must and of course women you know ayurveda give gave you know very good amount of uh, importance to the women from the birth in menarki rajaswala paricharya during the menarki how exactly that particular girl has to be taken care and then during uh, the menstruation all the other period and then be, when after being becoming pregnant how that prenatal care to be taken garbha samskara charyas after delivering postnatal sutika paricharya so all these things are quietly you know given in a very large and this thing so first constitution has to be understood and then uh, customized uh, prescription has to be made according to that so menstrual health can be taken care with a good amount of uh, herbs like we have ashoka 
where you know the shoka is not there ashokam there is no sadness lodra is also one of the other thing that is another uh, herb so balancing hormones is an another task where uh, the menopausal conditions menopausal areas because most of the females will face menopause condition post menopausal conditions in some women you know it is very severe some some women you know you cannot see you will not see any a single symptom pregnancy and postpartum care menopause support is also there ayurveda is the only science you know which has explained about the quality of the breast milk as soon as the uh, pregnant lady is delivered that particular breast milk is tested if it is vitiated for any other doshas or anything otherwise you know that particular breast milk tell upon the uh, health of the child the child become very diseased so during before with the weaning period when we try to give any medicine to the child child we only give the medicine to dhatri that is mother we give, give the medicine to the mother and then through through the breast milk that may boy gets some boy girl you know gets medicine medicinal value and bone health during the menopausal condition that is very important to take care of because she enters into the post uh, no, osteoporotic age next please the breast health you know that is very important for them emotional well being during menopause so these are the herbs you know which are very useful among uh, the female that is first is shatavari so consultation and the personal guidance is very much required for every individual woman because all the symptoms are different among one of the other do you know uh, ayurveda has given a lot of importance to twak that is you know skin no one really knows you know ayurveda has really talked about the beauty ever but there is a very varied you know explanation about the beauty if you go to some of the temples like holebeda holebedu you can see uh, the sculptures you know watching their themselves into a mirror doing some you know makeup so everything was explained in those days they have made perfumes they have made you know a kind of uh, hair uh, uh, care uh, lotions or hair care uh, material beauty care material and body wash and uh, things how exactly the skin is you know made into very brighten kind of things all those things we were you know taught about that when we talk about the age i mean beauty we talk about the beautiful skin beautiful hair beautiful color of the hair of course beautiful voice everything we talk about right if the hair is not good she doesn't look good right the skin is completely wrinkled automatically not good so when we talk about the beauty protection we have to talk about vayasthapana that is you know the aging aging process we should take care of the wrinkles the health of the skin glowingness of the skin and all these things you know should be taken care so how exactly they made you know lifestyle modifications of course the sleep should be proper if one person's sleep is not proper their health doesn't look good their skin doesn't glow so always by just by looking at the skin you will be able to tell you know the internal problem of the person next please so these are all the techniques where in you know this thing next please next go on so ayurveda is always there for every age group from the newborn till the late age of a person we start giving uh, you know a baby with swarna prashanam have you heard about swarna prashanam swarna prashna is nothing but swarna means gold prashna means eating we make the boy to eat gold 
gold is considered to be medya rasayanam the most uh, prominent rasayanam it is thought that you know the boy will grow with without any other uh, immunological vaccination it gives that much of immunity to the baby baby it makes the person so healthy that he might not get any cancer kind of things cancer kind of diseases in the future no sir vasanta kusmara varam is a one particular uh, preparation where that will have an amount of gold in it but i am talking about the gold direct gold calx there is a practice that people used to have their lunch or maybe meal in a gold plate that is supposed to be called that very uh, immunity booster before that i have to establish one particular thing you know the medicines are not that dangerous even allopathic doctors they use rm injections rm is nothing but you know the gold according to ayurveda if you make a calx out of in you know, a particular uh, uh, mineral that is that could be you know mercury or that could be a gold or that could be lead or whatever if you make a calx out of it it requires certain amount of process putting in lot of you know herbs into it and that is you know processed in a proper way that should, huh? kajali is one other thing that is amalgamation of uh, mercury and uh, sulfur that is kajali that is an another uh, thought of things where it is different this is something different i am talking about the individual metal if that is made into calx calx if that is you know given in inside if it can pass through the kidney if can cut the kidney can process it automatically there is no harm at all so there were some studies in oklahoma university medical college they said that uh, argyavardhini was given to some particular rats and direct mercury was given to some particular rats some amount of rats and they studied it the argyavardhini has not seen any kind of amount of uh, Uh, sediments in uh, the brain but when mercury was given there were lot of sediments given uh, traces found in the brain so there are plenty of things which we can talk about when ayurveda was practicing surgery during the period of ashoka when ashoka is a disciple of a practitioner of buddhism buddha is against himsa himsa they started saying that you know doing puncturing to the body or you know making uh, some with vedana or ska things surgical incision into the body is nothing but himsa only so surgical practices were banned completely then some of the people have developed uh, alchemy that means you know making the body so strong that of the metal then started practicing a lot of things out of mercury there was also a practice of making you know uh, cheaper metals to the costlier metals like you know mercury is transformed directly into the swarnam that is gold that is called parasuvedi so those kind of practices were there during nagarjuna and other areas where it was during uh, the early centuries of uh, common era there were the practices so after that they have developed lot of uh, mercurial preparations which were also uh, given to the patients for healing purposes or you know treatment purposes therapeutic purposes so those practices were not evidently made and this was this is the allegation made by most of the modern doctors but since we are doctors into this particular medicine since almost 27 years of my practice i have given almost thousands of people with lots of uh, herbal mineral medicines but never even a single person didn't never came with some amount of you know problem with their kidney or any other things we must have treated some thousands of people it was the case with me what about the other doctors almost 1000 maybe 1000 plus doctors are working in telangana ayurvedic doctors everybody gives the same kind of medicines their numbers could be less little but 
still there are more number of people right who have received you know lot of other these things so it should be noted that as long as the particular medicine is prepared classically according to the text that doesn't harm the body if it is not so then automatically everything does you know what amount of damage can be happened if you take a single amount of pill of dolo panisa medicine or fever or anything or fever we are using dolo dolo only and all the doctors prefer to uh, give this medicine <laughs> no no every dolo will kill your liver at least thousand cells of your liver it's a potent hypotoxic hypotoxic Old lady, the first question the doctor asked why is she is taking any alcohol or something like that, uh, which of course she was not Next taking. Next, of course, the Ayurvedic doctor. Yeah. Ayurvedic no, the second thing, yeah, the second question the doctor asked what are you taking some Ayurvedic medicines regularly? That was the second question of the doctor. I usually, you know, hear the same thing kind of things yeah. actually. No, because it it happened with me. I was there all the time during the treatment. Mm. So for acute treatment. for uh, taking trifala or aloe vera amla juice uh, daily uh, you should not take all these things should, you should stop immediately that was the thing the uh, the uh, very senior hepatologist uh, has suggested so sir so the reason may be no no no, no, uh, no he, he has generalized that sir i'll tell you i'll tell you one thing i'll tell you prashant sahab just told that fruits you should take this allopathy doctors they say don't so because it was a very serious condition and the doctor so, stated the second can question I, was that okay sir i'll answer have you seen people uh, going to uh, what is that um, barkas for a liver medicine yes. hmm. it could uh, whatever it could be see yunani is no different from ayurveda only the name differs you want me to speak in mic no it's okay acha it's okay so no ayurvedic medicine really damages the liver first except you know there were some practices like people watch take opinion from the youtube or maybe whatsapp maybe from facebook saying that you know somebody told me that you know that particular drug really helps you in this particular condition they start taking it without knowing anything about the drug without having any knowledge about the drug without the knowledge of taking how exactly it has to be taken whether it has to be purified or without it has to be taken directly or it has to be mixed with some other thing and can be taken so it is not fault of the uh, the doctor most of the people they go over the counter and uh, take some medicines we always see they follow uh, some kind of you know magazines or somebody uh, follows the youtube uh, talks they simply go and take some medicine the very first message where they get and they go to a shop some of the things some of the message may be missed the faulty intake would short the faulty intake would lead to some problem i'll tell you uh, there is a you know myth called diabetes it's a sweet disease 
who will kill it the bitter will kill it so whatever is bitter they started taking it let that be anything so there was a particular plant called guduchi tinaspura cordifolia which is supposed to be an anti very good uh, medicine it is called amrutavalli amrutavalli means life saving uh, 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 herb okay but the plant part which has to be used in a very prominent way is its stem but people started taking its leaves assuming that since it is bitter in taste it can kill the sugar but it is a potent anti uh, sorry hepatotoxic some of them really suffered with but who is uh, responsible for it it was their own conception saying that you know bitter will kill the sugar it doesn't happen most of the practices which we have in our home while you have your diet while you practice your you know other things your daily routine everything was taught by our grandparents or maybe you know even further ancestors all those practices were according to the own system of uh, their practice their uh, religious practices or maybe you know this particular session the sankranti everybody should have gingerly the till every day you should bath with till putting till into your water you will have a bath all these practices were you know given by our ancestors we started practicing in not without knowing anything now the customs have changed because amendments according to our own comfort chalo shastra ke liye itna dalo no one really knows why exactly we put in so this is how the practices kept on changing 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 and getting completely diversified and to some other thing but i am sincerely is telling you sir there are lot of research happened no single ayurvedic drug been my uh, own friends you know they are into ayurvedic doctor I mean, allopathic doctors you know i am practicing names they keep on asking me your dr- drugs you know they kill liver i talk about the same thing you see my drug you know it never kills but you know dolo definitely kills it <laughs> right even a small child in your home when they have when they see the temperature of the boys or girl is a little high they simply go to you know a typhi or you know paracetamol syrup and they put it that is nothing but you can google it you can see how potent uh, hepatotoxic it is i'm not denying that you know dolo is really wrong not to take but if you continuously taking it definitely you'll end up in having cirrhosis of liver even i have treated cirrhosis of liver and i could uh, you know uh, prolong her uh, life certain amount of life and you know we have made her uh, life quality better okay with our ayurvedic medicines i am not getting used pneumonia acha pneumonia the uh, okay china started uh, facing that by start, started witnessing that particular pneumonia flu flu related pneumonia which was it was it started with the flu ended up with pneumonia and uh, eventually even much worse than covid more virulent after seeing this also you can ask <laughs> so pneumonia we have a lot of anti uh, immunity boosters sir immunity boosters we have regular consumption of your uh, tulsi leaf tea that would definitely no mm. it's, it's there or no it's over sir so i'm only so, answering very uh, ca- ca- kindly with yes sir a uh, very good presentation can we give a big, big round of uh, applause <laughs> now uh, now, now sir uh, two, two points w- one is uh, you said 1000 years maybe 100 years healthy life so whatever points you have said well covered anything additionally you like to have 1 2 3 for long wait actually i missed that particular yeah. kind of thing when you want to have a long wait in your life how do you prefer with the disease or without disease so in the very beginning you know few slides before only i have told you if you can practice dinacharya 
Rutacharya. According to the doshic phenomena, if you can have or incorporate the dietary system or dietary inputs into your diet, you can start practicing it. Then you can definitely live not 100 years, even more 110 years. With all those abilities which you are performing it in younger age. All those abilities. One should have, you know, practice of Rasayana. Rasayana means having, you know, very powerful and potent dhatus in your body. Dhatus. Rasarakta Mamsa Medo Asti Majha Shukram. These are the dhatus. They should be in a very potent position. Omnipotent. Very good, uh, this one. For them, they can have it. Not only drugs. The Rasayana means not only drugs. There should be an Achara Rasayana. Achara Rasayana means practice. By some of the good practices, you can longevity can improve. Not to tell lies. Always speak truth. Have respect towards your elders. Have respect to your neighbors. Have respect to your love and affection to your everybody. Then definitely your mental position. If you start loving everyone, even to your foe also. Automatically, end of the day, you'll have a nice sleep. Am I right or not? But nowadays, what really happening? Very next moment, uh, he, they, he quarrels with uh, his neighbor. So, there was a saint, saint called, you know, people, they say, when you quarrel to someone, your body tissues starts quarreling each other. The harm happening to the other fellow will be very lesser than harming your own tissues. The person who lives with, uh, what is that, Madha, Matsarya, Dvesha, Asuya and all. Irsha, Dvesha, Madha, Mu, Matsarya, Moha, Madha, Matsarya, Arishad, Vargal. They have to be avoided. That is to have longevity of life. Okay? Good, good. Impossible. <laughs> Sir, Sir, that's a good one. Wait, wait, just, wait, sorry. wait, wait, wait. No. What about willpower, believe in yourself and confidence? Is it placed any, any role in individual longevity? Sir, when I started talking about the Achara Rasenam, that is the first one which have to be practiced. Willpower, as long as you have willpower, you cannot sustain the enmity of the other one. No. When you start, you can sustain the enmity of the other one, You then you start loving him. Then automatically it becomes a good practice of your life. Am I right? Uh, so that's good. Now uh, we believe that all pathies, they have got their strengths and they have got limitations. And here we want to uh, also learn to leverage on the strengths of each other. Uh, uh, so uh, Ayurveda, what the strengths you are uh, well covered, but also the limitation where we uh, you think people must go for allopathy? Where do you think uh, Ayurveda, this come on Ayurveda? Allopathy system is more potent when it is acute condition. Life saving. Ayurveda, allopathy has, you know, all yes. It has anesthesia. It has analgesia. It has got antibiotics. It has got antihistamines and other things. Without these, they don't have any other pathis, I mean, things. So, all these are very helpful when it is acute condition. When it comes to Ayurveda, some of the cases in acute conditions also we treat, but not everyone. That is a lack. In chronic conditions, we can definitely. We also have the prognostic values, as the allopathic doctors do. We also say treatable, untreatable, can be managed. According to that, we can plan out. Nowadays, Ayurvedic system, Ayurvedic medicines have become very costly. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Thank you. So, now the ne next, uh, sir, few questions. First, uh, can we give preference to the ladies who are here? Lad ladies first, you know. I'll come to you, sir. I'm coming. I'll so, so ladies who have not asked question, any, any, anyone is there who would like to ask question? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, madam. Yeah, please. 
so how do we understand our prakriti uh, like uh, to adapt a healthy diet and a healthy lifestyle how do we understand the prakriti and how do we understand the dosha we have landed into whenever you undergo a particular consultation with a doctor those who can explain about your uh, you know constitution by looking at your nadi no without the consultation of a doctor if you want to understand at home how do you expect without consultation of a doctor see sir prakriti is something that we have to understand our own body and we ourselves can understand our own body that Madam, rather I'll than you, a doctor i'll tell you one thing i'll tell you one thing unless you look at Huh. Some signs and symptoms. Okay. So, when se when second, every person b b takes birth with some kind of constitution. As he goes up, as he grows up, constitution also goes up with the same thing. According to dosha only, we have to decide their constitution. Okay. Unless we look at the nadi, we cannot say anything. Just we know. whenever a person comes to us darshanam sparshanam prashna first you know we look at it look at the patient then sparshanam that is touching the body touching the nadi or may examining the then we put some questions out of them only we can conclude with saying the constitution okay just by looking at a person only up to some extent we can say just looking at the skin looking at the hair Uh, so sir, but the ba basically, way. she says, uh, what, what, uh, "We have to consult a doctor." Yes. Right? Yes. right, right. Thank you. Okay, Shuru, Shuji, you got. Yeah. Sir, lot of our Indians are living in US, and their babies or toddlers, say five months, six months, seven months, they have usually lot of cold, cough, and severe cold also, blowing nose and all everything. But the doctors there, they don't give any medicines. so i would like to ask you and there are lot of people who has raised this there are groups of people of small babies or wo log pareshan hai so i just want to know what medicines of ayurveda homemade can be given to them for very severe cold and cough sir i'll tell you <laughs> two infants two infants in a cold country and minus temperature maybe a bit nahi nahi dawai puch rahe yaar that's true sir that's true I'll give you a very wonderful uh, non-pharmacological technique. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, no. Please. You take uh, what is that? Uh, hair dryer. Do you know hair dryer? And this, you know, this is the part where upper portion of the foot. Ah, uh, just put it. blow the hot air continuously and you know i mean pulsatively like you know just moving it doing it for 5 minutes in a day for 7 days third day itself you know the clothes go, goes down cold and wonderful thing is you cannot expect it again oh, oh wonderful Give, give give a big round of applause to Dr. This is this is a magic. I think this is a magic. Sir, okay. just tra start practicing it. This start for uh, this for infants. You are saying, sir, for infants. See, everybody, sir, everybody, even ad adults also can practice. No foot massage. Okay. It, it does. Okay, Hariji, you have got any anything to ask? Madam, I'll okay, tell you. Okay, okay, particularly. Please. Please. Sir, one 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 minute. Yeah, yeah, please. very very sir quick question quick answer please yeah yeah we have a hospital of cnc hospital jada bhai are mic do i i'll come hai sir right i'll be very quick sir my question is very precise we have a hospital cnc hospital very I'm very short very yeah, 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 short very and short. crisp I'm question very, because we are one hour late or, right yeah, yeah i understand we, we, see, we are, here see here we have to close mnj hospital sorry. mnj hospital yeah, yeah. mnj hospital yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for here. correcting here mm. right, itself i have been experienced one of my friend he recently passed away i was along with him for 18 days in hospital serving him and i saw like stage by stage he was dying even though i was trying to giving more confidence and all even i bought few tablets which were very expensive from bangladesh and all in so ayurveda does we have 
any solution at this stage or be going before that stage. Because uh, in your talk you said like there was nothing like cancer in our olden days. So I believe you are coming with the same perception that we can cure cancer completely, reverse the cancer. Because I have very little to the that you can expect a Nobel Prize by next year. <laughs> okay. Uh, th thank you very so much. So now what uh, will happen is in any cancer case, right. what exactly we do is Rasayana therapy. Rasayana therapy. So with that Rasayana therapy, at least we can improve the quality of life. So having a lot of complications till the death and prolonging their life with the, all the complications. Let him live for a few more day, few days with very good quality of life. Uh, palliative care? Uh, palliative care very, very good. and very curative care also we do. And we have seen people, you know, I treated one lung cancer patient who was almost every fortnight she was about to brought to Hyderabad. She used to drop at Sikindrabad and uh, at the moment she get thrown uh, uh, the train, there was uh, ambulance ready. She was brought to the Apollo hospital where she was given a transplantation, um, blood transfusion, then was taken back to Nidhavol. She was from Nidhavol. So we started giving the treatment. Eventually, you know, it started improving. First, the transfusion phase was up to one month and then later on, third month. Later on, she never had any transplant, trans transfusion, blood transfusion. She was given it a you know, period of six months initially before our treatment. We could prolong her uh, life almost about two and a half years. She had been to Tirupati, she had been to Sri Shailam, where she was not expected actually. His son was so eager, you know, she was so happy, he was so happy that he telephoned me and that said my, daughter, so my mother started walking all the steps and all. We could do that. Uh, thank you, sir. Yeah, f sir, fast. Yeah, we sir, any rational remedy for healthy hair? Healthy hair, I already <laughs> told you, if you yeah, can yeah, put, sir, you yeah. know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. regular application of oil into your nose, that yeah, would yeah. definitely make your healthy hair. Uh, can you tell exactly this, kapha, vata, pitta, what it is and why it's important? Sir, I think it is a long one. It is very, th very th theoretical. So we are not going there. Yes, madam. Madam, yeah. Please, please, please. Um, the doshas, the three doshas, what you have mentioned, will those change according to the seasons, or it will remain the entire life? The reason why we ask the patient or person to eat according to the season is to sustain the stability of the dosha. See, if you are vata condition, if you the chayam happens in the vasantaratu. Uh, okay. Okay. Prakopam yeah, yeah. is kapha. Please, please, very, so very, very quick and fast, sir. Very quick. So do that. Okay. It keeps on changing, but by maintaining the dietary pattern, you can sustain the stability of the dosha. Sir, we are exceeding the time. Wait, wait. Then I'll tell, I'll take uh, la last three yeah, questions now. Sunshine exposure, vitamin D and all. Uh, is it uh, that the whole body has to be exposed or, I mean, it depends, no? Everybody, how is it like? So the very purpose, single side, single side very purpose side. of exposing to sunlight is yeah. to uh, acquire the vitamin D. Yeah, last, last. last little amount of your uh, skin is exposed, but that particular absorption of uh, vitamin D is enough. Okay. Sir, uh, hi, yes. Uh, Shishi, thank sir, you, yes. Dr. Saab. When we want to consult you, is there a facility to consult? Uh, can we patient? share your number with? Uh, uh, my number you can have, uh, you can note down. Yeah. Okay. Sir, you can, mic, you can pass on here. Uh, See, I am, you know, uh, available we'll, we'll at share, the share your NIMS number. hospital. Can you share on the screen? NIMS uh, hospital. We'll, we'll share you all, all the number and uh, all the presentation. Sir, your Sir, thank, uh, thank yeah. you very much. Once again, for Kalonji oil, I would like to uh, know from I'll come, to it, I'll come to it, sir. That is one. And prevention of pneumonia and I have already treatment. told you. I have told you pneumonia. Uh, no, I think that was uh, cut off uh, in between. It was not completed. Kalonji oil is, can be taken. That is uh, considered to be, you know, rich in... Most oh, of uh, okay, last last one, please. Uh, the no. omega three fatty acids yeah. and Sir. other uh, okay. uh, very good fats. Right, uh, doctor. Okay. Dry, uh, that can be had for the management of obesity. 
Okay. Yes. Doctor, yes, this yeah. uh, dry skin uh, causes a lot of issues. So, can you suggest a moisturizer which is purely natural? Because in the market you see a lot of things which are chemical based. So, anything which is uh, really natural for the skin. We were talking about skin care. So, the best moisturizer can be castor oil. Okay. Butter, butter. Okay, okay. Butter <laughs> also, you know, it glows your skin. <laughs> yeah, any butter, any butter. Ah, venna. Makan, ah. So, we... Uh, th th so th 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 we will be, uh, Dr. Sir will be there, you will be here, one to one you can have. A big round of applause for so Dr. Prasad. Take my number, and, uh, take my team. number. And all of you for your... One minute, one minute, one, please be seated. So, take and my number, sir, I am giving you. 939. One zero two. Nine one one eight. I think my number is available on the Google also. You can have it. Ritish. Nine three nine. One zero two. Nine one one eight. Doctor T. Srinivas Prasad. T. S. Prasad. Okay. Uh, R Riteji, can you can just come here? So, uh, ju just kindly be seated for a few seconds. Come. So, uh, can we uh, request our our managing committee member, Mr. Ritesh, to present a moment to Dr. Prasad, sir? Sir, is there any? Samne, Ritesh. So, can we request our uh, Vice President R Raviji to propose vote of thanks? Uh, uh, Chaturvedi, sir, we didn't have opportunity of time to listen to you. We'll have next time. Yeah. Yeah, it's a long day. Yeah. And uh, on behalf of FTCCI and myself, I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to esteemed doctors, speakers, our senior vice president, chair of health committee, and everyone who graced us with their presence. We'd also like to thank our partners for the event, Prompt Packaging Chain Foundation and ICICA Bank. With a heart full of gratitude as we bring this enlightened Ayurveda seminar to a close, today has been a journey into the profound wisdom of Ayurveda and we are deeply thankful for the collective energy and enthusiasm that has fueled this event. First and foremost, our sincere appreciation goes to our esteemed doctor, Dr. K. Srinivas Rao, Dr. B. Ramdask, and our speaker for the day, Dr. T. S. Prasad. Thank you. Your engaging talk on the basics of Ayurveda, its relevance for today's generation, benefits and practical tips have undoubtedly left an, uh, an indelible mark on our, all of us. A special note of thanks to our attendees. I would also like to express our thanks to the technical and support staff who worked behind the scene to ensure the smooth running of this event. As we conclude this seminar, let us carry forward the spirit of Ayurveda, embracing its ancient wisdom for a healthier and more balanced life. Thank you and wishing you all the best on your co continued journey towards well-being. Thank you. Now, three things. Dr. Prasad and team is there. Anyone is there, one-to-one, one, you can talk to them. The pre presentation would be available to you in due course of time. Dr. Prasad's number is already there. And our federation, Dr. Sanjana number you can ta take. And that will be helping. Uh, 